Hello, and welcome to the PowerBase Garage, your source for all things PowerBase. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube so you can learn more about the amazing products from PowerBase. Also, on our YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe and comment for your chance to win a PowerBase t-shirt and a backpack full of PowerBase goodies. We're going to pick a random winner soon, so be sure to comment and subscribe and follow us. Coming up next, we're gonna talk with Dave about the new XL50 V2 series soundbars, how to install, and all of the mounting options. Be sure to check it out. Welcome back to the PowerBase Garage. Let's get right into it. We're gonna go over the installation of the cable for the soundbar. <clears throat> Your cable that you're gonna find located in the box is a 15 foot extension cable that's gonna to connect to your soundbar right here at the Molex plug. From there, you're gonna route your cables to the wires where you need them. Your power and ground connections must go to the post of the battery. You're gonna see that we've already terminated them with the ring terminal, so it makes it very easy to connect to any existing battery that's, that you're connecting it to. Once your power and ground connections are done, make sure the fuse is intact. Now you're gonna to need to power the soundbar on through a switch. There's a turn on lead here that you're either gonna run off an ignition switch or a rocker or toggle switch. Once this receives power, the soundbar will turn on automatically. Once the power is removed, the soundbar will shut down automatically. Whenever you power the soundbar back up, wherever you left the controls on the soundbar, the volume, the mode, it will retain that memory and fire right back up where it was left off. Now let's say you're going to use a existing audio source, say a ride command unit or a marine radio, and you want to connect it to your soundbar, we do incorporate a auxiliary input with a set of female RCAs. This here, you'll run your RCA extension from your preamp output of your existing head unit right into the soundbar, put the soundbar into the auxiliary mode, and now you'll be able to, to listen to your audio through the soundbar. Let's say you want to add audio behind the soundbar. Behind the soundbar, you're going to find that we have a auxiliary output with a set of male RCA connections. These here, as long as you have these routed right to your amplifier, you can plug them into your amplifier, and that way you don't need no extension cables at all. Just plug and play, basically. Uh, this also here is used if you're going to daisy chain soundbars. If you're going to use two soundbars, you're going to take the aux input from one soundbar, from the aux out to the other, and you're just going to plug them together. Simple. No extra cables or anything needed. This will daisy chain the soundbars to give, enjoy two soundbars at the same time. If you're adding, using an amplifier or your second soundbar, you're gonna need a way to turn those on. So we incorporate a remote output wire. This wire here will send 12 volts to either turn on your amplifier or your second soundbar. That's it, that's how simple it is to install the XL50 series V2 soundbars. That's your cable. Now let's talk about the mounting options. You're gonna notice it's gonna come with a set of L brackets and you're also gonna get four mounting posts too short and too long. The two short ones are gonna be used with our optional SBT and SBS clamps. The two longer studs are gonna be used if you're gonna do a custom installation, where you're say you're gonna mount it through an existing pipe in the vehicle. By doing that, you're gonna drill a hole where you're gonna mount it, for example, just like this. Then you're gonna tighten it up using the lock nut and secure it. And you notice that you're able to move the angle. So just depending on how the bar is designed in the vehicle, you're able to, to move it around to make it fit perfect for you. If that's not the option for you, then you can utilize the L brackets. The L brackets will give you the same concept where you can just drill a hole right through, use your lock nut on top and tighten it up. Or if you have a square bar option, you can use the square clamps right to the L bracket and mount it as so. If you're mounting it to a round roll cage, you can use the round clamp option and do the same concept here. Tighten it up, adjust the angle, and there you go. If you do use the clamp system and you need it to come inside the sound bar because these are too far out, you can come to one of these six mounting points, install your stud, and then install your mounting block and then your square hoop on your square stock. Again, can be rotated and moved depending on the direction that the, the bar is in the vehicle. Or, round stock, you do the same thing. You just choose the correct mounting ring 
and then again, be able to move it around as you need. Now from there, you're gonna have the option of using our XL SB clamp too. These here are a compression style clamp that will mount into one of the six points on the, either the top or the bottom with the, with the mounting stud. And then these will fit a bar size anywhere from one and a half to two and three quarter inch. They have locking teeth, so once they compress and lock in, they grab to the bar so it doesn't let the sound bar move. Those are gonna be your mounting options for our XL50 V2 sound bars. Now let me show you how to use all the features and functions on your new sound bar. First, you're gonna to come to the sound bar and you need to power it on. This process is really only need to be done one time. Once you do power it up, it takes about three, four seconds holding the sound bar button, the power button down. You're gonna hear a series of beeps. And now the Bluetooth button is flashing, waiting for a Bluetooth device to pair to it. If you have a device that's already been paired, it will pair automatically. If not, we're gonna to need to pair. So let's, let me show you how to pair. You're gonna to have to go to your phone, open your Bluetooth connections, look for XL 650, 850, or 1250, depending on your model, click on it. It's gonna connect. Once it connects, the Bluetooth button will stop flashing and showing that you have a connected device. Once connected in the Bluetooth mode, you can now change tracks via your track buttons here and also adjust volume here. You can do this on the keep on your main keypad here, or you can do it on your phone. The power button here is a dual function button. Holding it for five seconds will power the unit down, but tapping it is going to do your play pause. It'll pause your music and then it will play it when you're in the Bluetooth mode. The Bluetooth button here is also a dual function button. Tapping it will put it into the auxiliary input mode. You'll notice this because the Bluetooth light will be off. To go back to Bluetooth, you'll push the button again, and now it will actually go back into Bluetooth, look for a paired device, and then pair it. Now let's talk about how to pair a wireless remote control. The wireless remote control here You'll be able to pair by holding the track button down for three to five seconds till the keypad starts flashing. Once it flashes, you're gonna hit one of the buttons on the remote control. You'll notice that the pairing sequence is finished. Now you have your new remote paired to your soundbar. These are gonna be all the features and functions for your new XL50 V2 soundbar. Enjoy.